Callum, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yay, thank you. I'm I'm hoping we can get our presenter to hear me too. <laughs> Welcome everyone. <laughs> Well, our presenter just dropped off. Let's hope that she returns. Callum, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'll, okay. Yeah, I'll just turn the camera on in two seconds. I just need to change the settings. Yes. Hi there. Hi, Callum. And do I pronounce your name Nightingale? Uh, Nightingale. I think someone made a, a spelling error there. So uh, okay, <laughs> Nightingale. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank I'm you. I'm going Thank you. to uh, give your little introduction, if you don't mind. This is about becoming an organized educator with Wakelet, and your presenter is Callum Nightingale. All right, Callum, it's all you. Can you share your screen? Hi, everybody. Um, I am. Uh, Callum from Wakelet. So I am part of the product team here. 
but I'm grateful to be here along on this conference to talk you through Wakelet, the benefits of Wakelet, what you could use it for, and talk you through a few examples. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If you could all let me know, if you could let me know if you see it, and that'd be great. Can you see Perfect. it? Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So let me actually jump in by using Wakelet to demonstrate what Wakelet is. So I'll run through this collection really quickly, and I'll just sort of give you a brief overview of Wakelet, and then I'll run, run into um, some use cases and how you can use it into the basics of getting your account set up. Um, feel free to ask any, any questions in the chat as well. Um, happy to answer them as, as they come through. So feel free just to let me know if anything comes through that you want me to answer. So yeah. Wakelet, really simply, is a content curation platform that allows you to save and organize content from around the web into Wakelet, into Wakelet collections. Uh, and what we do at Wakelet is we just make it really visual and we make it really easy for you to share that out. So Wakelet's completely free to use. Um, you can have unlimited amount of collections, unlimited amount of collaborators uh, on Wakelet. And we're also copper, FERPA, GDPR, uh, New York CD law, all the different compliances. Uh, we're all we're meeting all those standards. Um, we work with a lot of your favorite tools. Uh, so Wakelet, and I'll show you through some of these in a moment, uh, simply allows you to bring content in and displays them in a really visual way. So maybe pl platforms you can recognize on here, there's many more than on this photo, but Loom, Microsoft Teams, Unsplash, Kahoot, Flip, Moat, Google, we work with Google Classroom, Twitter, um, YouTube, the list goes on and on and on. Pretty much anything with a URL can be added to a Wakelet collection. Uh, you can also add your own notes and upload your own photos. Um, we do also have a paid version of Wakelet as well, which is more to do with when you want to roster kids in and keep them in a sort of a secure classroom environment. Uh, and I'll run through that a little bit further down the line as well. Um, so I'll just go on this collection to sort of showcase some of the different integrations that we have on the platform. And bear with me while it loads a second. So as you can see here, and I'll show you how you can build these collections uh, really, really simply uh, in, in the next five to 10 minutes. Um, when you paste a URL into Wakelet, it just automatically embeds it into the collection. So for example, you can see YouTube here, I can hit play and the video will play inside of Wakelet. So that's been really good for teachers who are creating maybe lesson plans or resources that they want to share with their kids because it just means that they can stay in in Wakelet they don't have to go off to YouTube or whatever platform you're directing them to and maybe get lost and get um maybe distracted by the other content that's on there um you can also see Flipgrid videos they automatically embed in as well so for, if you hey, want to maybe make a, a Wakelet collection and you want to sort of give some uh, tips or some instruction to your students using video. Uh, you can easily embed weight um, Flipgrid videos in there. Um, we work with Canva as well. So we actually have an integration with Canva where you can actually create Canva uh, images via Wakelet itself. So in case you wanted to maybe, maybe make something for in your collection or the cover of your collection, you can do that really easily uh, as well. Um, moats, they can embed straight in and this will play when I when I press play in case you wanted to, again, leave any um, audio information to uh, for your students or you want to give them maybe a bit of feedback. And tweets, maybe this is maybe not as more, maybe not really useful for you in the classroom, but more maybe more so if you want to document any uh, PD that you've done or curate information for newsletters maybe that you want to share for your school. Uh, or maybe to your parents in your school or anything along those lines. Uh, and again, I'll show you a little bit about that shortly. Um, genially collect, uh, genially um, boards can go straight in and interactive within Wakelet as well, which is really neat. Um, and yeah, lots of different, as you can tell, there's lots of different things you can embed into Wakelet and it's really interactive. Um, are there any questions so far or is that all, all making sense? Awesome, awesome. So uh, I'll run through sort of account, like setting your account up, what steps you need to go through to do that. And then I will talk you through actually building a collection, some of the basics. Um, and then I'll go through a lot of different examples. I know in the next session, my colleague Michael is going to jump on and he's probably going to go into more of the detail of building collections, using classrooms and all those sorts of things. So I'm just going to show you a lot of different uh, examples. So 
yeah, I'll jump into it. So I'm just going to go into a different window here. So I'm signed out of Wakelet. Uh, very simply, all you need to do is go to wakelet.com. Um, you'll be landing on our sort of landing page. It gives you a bit of information about what, what Wakelet is. And then just hit sign up. You'll be met with some of these options here. I'm sure uh, you're aware of like, you, you, maybe a lot of you, you maybe use Clever, Google Classrooms or Microsoft. I'm not totally sure what uh, what you might use in your districts, but we have single sign-on in case you want to sort of jump straight in um, and sign in via that platform. Or you can sign up via um, an email address and password. So I'm just going to sign up really quickly with an email address and password. Uh, give me two seconds. Okay, enter your email address and a password. And we also have a, a date of birth, a date of birth age gating here. And this is just so uh, to block really uh, students that are maybe too young to sign up for Wakelet. So Wakelet are terms of service for students to actually sign up to the platform on their on, on their own is 13 and up. But through our classrooms feature, um, if you import them and roster them in, they can be any age. Um, but this is just a, a measure that we've put in to make sure that students that are too young don't sign up to the platform uh, accidentally. So I'm going to put my date of birth in here and, and I'm going to check the terms of service and I'm going to go and create my account. Oh, there we go. So when you land on Wakelet, it'll ask you a few different questions. So just to get a bit of information from you so we can help make the experience better for you. Um, so you select you an educator, um, what country you're from, and also we uh, what, what sort of grade level you teach. And we also ask uh, for people to uh, share us their uh, school. So we are doing this because in the future, we want to basically allow you to connect with other people in your school in case there are other people on there. So I'm going to type in a, a school that I know of, and it should appear in this list. Then you can go ahead and sort of, um, if your school doesn't appear, just hit not applicable, or you can sort of just sign in and, and choose a school that is uh, what, what school you go to. Uh, so I'm going to click not applicable in this one, and I'm going to hit done. Uh, and then I will land into Wakelet. So as you'll see, uh, you're in your Wakelet account now. Account setup process is really simple. Um, and what we'll do here is just sort of land you into your Wakelet account. Obviously, it's quite blank at the moment. You don't have any content there. But hopefully, uh, you'll then go in and create your own stuff that you want to maybe share with other people or use just for yourself. So getting started, really, really simply, you just create a hit create a collection. And yeah, we'll go through the steps to a few of the basic steps to setting up your first collection. And I will also show you a few examples. So I'm going to write a history assignments. Uh, and I so we've got these little, little little tips across the site just to help you along your journey, especially if you're a new user without any sort of instruction. Um, so I'm going to skip these steps because I will add some of my own content. But let's say we want to do some research on Abraham. Sorry about the Lincoln. Spelling is awful there. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> so he's, uh, spelling is always, uh, I always get the spelling wrong when I know people are watching me. So, <laughs> um, But I'm going to do some research here on Abraham Lincoln. I can go to the different websites, maybe do a bit of research and find some content I think is going to be really useful for my students or just for myself. And I'm going to simply copy that URL and paste it into this web address bar here. And Wakelet really, really simply, really easily will just sort of take that content, make it a bit visual. It will give you a bit of an indicator of what you're clicking on. So you can see like it's it's brought through the, the source of the information, which obviously is really important because we want to make sure that People are giving, we're giving credit and teaching those uh, citizenship, citizenship skills as well. Uh, we have um, title and description as well. But the great thing is we also allow you to customize that. So for instance, if you wasn't totally happy with the content that was on this item already that, that we sort of brought through, or there's any information, any other information that you wanted to add, you can do that really simply here as well. So I can just say, actually, please read this article it's important for next week and so on 
and then again you can you can also change the imagery on there as well and like I said, anything with a URL can go directly into a Wakelet collection, a collection and, and be embedded in there. Um, but you can do a few little things just to make the collection look uh, a bit visual as well. So we can add a uh, description here about what the collection is about. And we can also add a cover image so that when people sort of are shared the link, they can see like sort of what they're clicking on, what the collection's about, and a bit of imagery. So you can do that really simply by uh, editing the collection. So we have quite a few different layouts on here. Um, I won't run through every single one of them because I think Michael might run through that a little bit more in, in, the, in the next session. Um, but yeah, you can choose from a various different layouts and you can also just add a cover image on here. So we have some integrations with um, Unsplash, Canva, Giphy, and um, you can upload your own images. So here I'm going to just upload one from Unsplash, which is just a copyright free image platform in case you haven't heard of, heard of it. Um, and we just use that so we can um, allow users to find uh, images really easily rather than having to sort of go to Google, find something there and so on. So I'm going to choose that image and I'll go on. And then once I've built that collection out, I can then decide whether I want to share that to other people, maybe to collaborate with me on. I can share it to other people, whether they should my teachers, parents, whoever that might be, or I can just keep it private for myself. Um, I also have a, a public profile as well, where I can publish content too. So if I wanted to create lots of different collections, maybe build a portfolio, which is a really cool use case, which I'll sort of talk through in a moment. Um, you can also add them to your profile page. So I'm going to go to just jump to my profile page really, really quickly. Again, this is quite blank at the moment. There's nothing on there, but I can customize this, make it a bit visual, maybe add a little bit of information about myself um, and then like sort of build my profile out. Um, are there any questions on that? I'll sort of show you how to share and how to publish um, in just a tick. Nope. I'll see if there's anything in the chat. Okay, okay. I'll carry on through. So just going back to the, the collection page. Sorry, give me a second. Jump back to the collection. So if I wanted to uh, share this out to anybody or distribute this collection, I can hit the share button. And here we'll have uh, sort of the sharing options that we have. So by default, all collections are private. Um, so don't worry about building something that somebody else can find if you don't want them to. Um, but you can allow sharing. So that just means that you can then go ahead and share that link. It's not discoverable anywhere on sort of Wakelet or um, it's not it's not discoverable on Wakelet and nobody can find it just by, by searching Google, but you can share the link and people can access it. Um, and then we also have a publish to profile option, which press that and that'll just go directly to your profile page. Um, and then that will also publish it to Wakelet. So maybe other users can find that if, if you want them to. Um, Tell them there is a question in the chat. Okay. And uh, they're asking, is there a limit to how much you can make? No, Wakelet is completely un unlimited. You can create as many collections as you want. You can add as many items to all of your collections and you can invite as many contributors as you like as well. Um, we do have a paid element to Wakelet, which is more to do with uh, using Wakelet uh, with students and rostering. So we, we also have like a classrooms area on Wakelet where I think Michael's going to talk about that a little bit more as well, um, where you can sort of bring all your students in, bring them into sort of a closed off environment, which is really safe and secure, and they can build their collections and you can sort of monitor the work that they're doing. And then you can also, um, yeah, just keep track of their work. Uh, but yeah, completely free, completely unlimited, and you can sign up right now and it's, it takes just a couple of minutes to get, to get in. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Are there any more questions? Nope. Cool. Uh, and then finally, just on this, uh, while I'm sh showcasing this collection page before I go into some examples, is you can also invite people to collaborate. So uh, you can share this URL with them. So we have two different URLs, one which is a share URL, so people can see it and view it. But we also have uh, sort of an invite, uh, an invite link as well where you can share this uh, students or whoever that might be. They don't need to sign up to Wakelet. They can just click that link, join the collection as a guest, and then they can actually go and add content to your collection. We also do have two settings on there as well. 
One being that by default, when they join, they can only add content to the collection. They can't delete other contributors or your content. But we also have a setting that you can change where they can actually go in and, and, and edit anything that's in there. So it totally depends on yourself, uh, but it's really good for sort of uh, group projects, uh, entrance, exit tickets, getting quick feedback from the class, all those common sort of use cases that I've, I've seen people use. Uh, but also good when you're building maybe um, sub plans with teachers if you're not in school, maybe if you're you're off for the week or you've got some PD that you're, you you have to attend. It's really good building maybe sub plans together with another teacher. Uh, we know sometimes it's a bit difficult with with sub teachers coming in and they don't maybe have access to all the, the information that they need for the lesson. So this is just a good way to, to allow them to have access. Um, okay, I'm going to jump into uh, a few examples. Uh, there's quite a lot of different things you can do with Wakelet uh, as I just sort of give you a quick run through, really easy to sign up, quite easy to add content really quickly and make it visual but it can be used in so many different ways. And I just thought, thought it'd be really good to sort of talk through some of these ideas and some of these uh, these uh, examples and just walk through a few, a few examples uh, with you. So the first example I, I wanted to show was just um, column, the column layout actually. Um, I sort of scanned over this before with the different layouts you can have. Um, some people have said this is a little bit similar to Padlet in terms of like the, the column layout and, and and how people can sort of view content and collaborate. But it's just a really good example of sort of how you can categorize lots of different things. So this is what I, I use when I want to show a few examples with, with different people um, is we can go on this collect, this collection. We've got different categories of stuff that we can we can look through. So just before this webinar, I was looking through this um, this collection to, to sort of look what, what things I could share with you. But yeah, it's a really good way of sort of storing all of the content um, on different um, topics maybe or categories and you can sort of scroll through and, and you can um, you can see all the different stuff and obviously when you click that it'll take you to that relevant um, link so um, the first example I wanted to show to you was a portfolio so we know that sometimes uh, you might want to showcase maybe some work that you've been doing for your uh, professional development maybe it's something you want to showcase to I don't know, potential employers or I know with students, we encourage this quite a lot uh, where students sort of document their journey through their academic career and sort of show their timeline of improvement, maybe, or maybe something that they're proud of that they can share with um, potential employers, if they're submitting a college, college resume uh, or anything like that. So I'll just run through uh, Jennifer's portfolio collection that she's put together. But on here, she's got her, her resume, uh, which is just a PDF. So you can actually upload PDFs. I forgot to mention that earlier but you can upload PDFs to a collection, as you can see here. Um, she's got her own blog, so she's linked to that, and she's actually written a blog post for, for Wakelet, which is nice. So she's got that on there. Um, she's won a few, um, sorry, excuse me, awards for, for in her in her state, uh, as you can see here. She won um, the Technology Summit Awards. This was actually quite recently I saw on Twitter, so congratulations to Jennifer. Um, but she's got all of her uh, sort of, accolades, different things she's achieved, things she's a part of uh, in this sort of area. She has presentations that she's made, maybe anything that she's done on YouTube, uh, badges and certifications, uh, which is really nice. And also just any like mentions that she's had from other people on, on Twitter. Maybe she's done a really good session or something like that. She's curated that and, and shared and sort of put it onto her portfolio page. And she's also linked in her, her um, her Twitter account, her Instagram account, her LinkedIn account. So that's just really a good way of like sort of bringing all the best bits about you in one place and show, showing that off uh, maybe to other people. Um, so she actually links this on her LinkedIn, on her uh, Twitter page and all those sorts of things, which is really nice. But she also has a portfolio page. So I mentioned earlier, you can have collections and you can have a portfolio page where you sort of publish content to. So she had that portfolio collection, but she's also got a, a portfolio or page really, where she's got her portfolio on here. And then she's got all these different uh, collections that she's made across different types of topics or whatever. So she's got uh, a STEM uh, in elementary collections here. She's got quite a lot of content there, coding and robotics, middle school and high school STEM, and so on and so forth. So this is also a really good place where she can curate loads of different information and loads of collections, and then share that out to her colleagues in the school or maybe post it onto um, her LMS or wherever, whatever platform that they use. Uh, and it, everything is all in one place. So 
Um, we've seen that a lot of tech coaches, instructional tech coaches, they have a lot of information that they need to share with um, students on, I mean, sorry, teachers on tools that they're using in the classroom, um, how to use Pear Deck, for example, how to use Microsoft Teams, all those sorts of things. And a common problem what, it, we, that we heard was that they would always be sending links out to the to people and then they would get lost in an email or a thread somewhere. Um, and then they would, they would have to go and dig out some information uh, and then sort of keep sharing it to them in the future. Whereas she just curated this in one go, she can update it whenever she wants and then she can direct people to this page, which is the source of everything that she needs to share. So it's just a, a bit of a productivity hack as well, um, meaning that you, you don't have to sort of refine stuff that you've already sort of used or sent to people, it's just all in one place. So yeah, she's got a pretty nice uh, profile here. Again, she just publishes this to her profile by making the collection and publishing it to her profile. Um, and yeah, people can come to her, her profile and see what she's doing. So the great thing is you can also go and follow her as well. So you can maybe, you can keep up to date with what content she's creating. Um, there are also lots of other educators on Wakelet. So it's a great place to maybe you can search on Wakelet and find other things that maybe other people have made. So maybe save yourself a little bit of time there as well, because why recreate the wheel in some cases? Um, so any questions? No? Okay. Um, so I'll just run through a few more examples and then maybe we'll do a Q&A at the end with after running through some of these different examples. So um, yeah, it's really good for students as well. So we've seen a lot of teachers using Wakelet with students to get them to uh, maybe curate some research. So in this instance, um, there was a research, uh, research uh, activity on Alan Shearing. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Alan Shearing, but he is a pretty famous person in Manchester, UK, where I'm from. Um, but he was the created the first computer and was really important during World War, uh, uh, the war. So uh, I think it was World, yeah, World War II. Um, but uh, in this topic, the teacher asked the students to go ahead and do some research on um, a famous figure in history. Uh, in this instance, they did Alan Turing, and you'll see that what, uh, what they've actually built and curated. So uh, Alan Turing is actually on the British uh, pound as well on the hour and notes. So he's uh, yeah, a very famous person. Um, but it was sort of Alan Turing, who is he and why is he on the 50 pound note? And it was just a bit of research on on who he is, a bit of his history, a little bit of information about him, um, and so on and so forth. So it's a really good way for students to go ahead, do some research, demonstrate their research via a Wakelet collection, and it teaches some sort of like digital skills in terms of searching the web effectively and bringing um, good information together. So it's a really good skill that um, is being it's sort of being taught through Wakelet um, through the art of curation. Um, the one thing that you might have noticed as well in the collections is, is this little icon, which is really neat. It's um, Microsoft's Immersive Reader. So if you've not heard of that, it's a really great uh, accessibility tool that allows you to uh, read aloud text um, and translate into different languages. So if I click this button, it will take me to Microsoft's Immersive Reader and I can actually play this aloud and I can also actually uh, translate to different languages. Um, so I'll change this to Bulgarian um, and it should, give me two seconds, it should update the collection. What else is on the bank note? Oh, so it reads aloud, oh, give me a second. Oh, sorry, by document, there we go. Um, I was doing it by word. So by document, you can translate the whole, um, the whole bits of text in there and you can change different line heights. Um, we know that in some cases people prefer to re read line by line and also, excuse me, uh, you can change the colour on the, the background. So we know lots of people, uh, students uh, learn in different ways um, and read content in different ways as well. Well, not students, everybody. So it's a really good uh, tool that um, makes the, uh, the experience a bit more accessible for the students in the classroom. So yeah, really good example for research. And Callum, yeah. There's another question in the chat. Can awesome. we add a Google slide presentation? Sure, sure, yeah. Anything with a URL can go into a into a Wakelet collection. So I'll get um I'll get a Google slide. Have I got a Google slide? I'll show you how it looks. Uh, 
So I'll get this, excuse me, slide. You get the URL um, for the presentation. And if I go to wait for it, I go into this screen. Mm -hmm. So I've got that URL for the, for the Google slide, paste that in and it'll go in like that. So the reason why it's gone in like it has there is just because that presentation has been set so only the people from Wakelet can see it. So it doesn't automatically like bring like showcase some information to me. But if it's sort of um, labeled so that anybody can see it, then it'll, Google will allow us to take that information. So you can you can click on there and it will take you to this page in case you, you don't have access to that that slide. But if you do have access, it'll take you straight to straight to the the slide itself. But if you wanted to keep it private, so only your maybe your teachers in your school can see it, um, but you wanted to make it visual, again, like I showed earlier, you can go ahead and really easily uh, change this. You could say, um, you know, week five and some information on here and make it visual, like I shared earlier, and save it. So, yeah, anything with a URL can go into a Wakelet collection and can sort of be embedded in case if it's sort of been labeled that. Um, for public use, basically. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, okay, I need to go back to the screen. Um, yeah, as I said earlier, great for curating information to share with teachers. So uh, this was a really cool collection that I saw uh, that Todd made. And he was just basically curating all of the different browser extensions that are like great to use um that can like in, for different things so things that can save you time um things for creativity uh accessibility extensions yeah student feedback uh, and interactions uh and all just good good things that people can use in the classroom for their to make their job be a little bit easier so again that was a really good collection that he put together lots of different um categories and he just pulls all this information together Shares it, shares it so it's public on on um, on Wakelet, so other people, other teachers throughout the, from across the world can find this. But most importantly, for his teachers in his district to yeah access and and sort of see all the different things that he could use, uh, other people could use um, for for their classroom, so or in their school. So that was a really nice example. Um, yeah, professional development. I mentioned that again, quite similar to the collection that uh, I shared earlier, but. Sometimes it is um, quite difficult to sort of document your your professional development and keeping a track of that, so you can showcase that maybe to the admins in your in your school or your principal or whoever that might be. Um, but yeah, Lois here has just curated all of her information about all the professional development she's doing, um, and she's using it as a sort of like a journal to document all of her ongoing um, sort of yeah, like I said, professional development. So really nice one as well. Um, that she can share with her her, t uh, her principal and her admin in her, in her district. Um, finally, um, nearly, nearly at the end here of the examples, before we go into a quick Q&A, if there are any questions, um, before Michael jumps on, I think, um, shortly in a short while. Um, but yeah, also really good for uh, lesson plans. So again, I, I mentioned this earlier as well. Um, creating sub plans maybe uh, in case maybe you're out or you're ill or something like that, or uh, you're out of school for the week or something along those lines. It's a great way to curate uh, sub lesson plans and um, the teacher subbing for you can uh, sort of pick this up and use this for their, for their lesson rather than having to sort of uh, make their own stuff. Um, so yeah, really good example here. Uh, and again, this can be shared to, um, it can be shared to Google Classrooms as well and your LMS if you wanted to. So by the share option, you can share directly to these um, platforms, Google Classrooms and Microsoft Teams, but you can also, yeah, just co copy a link or um, the embed code, and you can embed that into your LMS as well if you wanted to. So if you use Schoology or Canvas or whatever that is, um, you can get an embed code and um, embed that directly into your uh, LMS. So really good example there for of how it can be used with the tools that you already use. Um, so that's, that's one thing we see a lot of teachers doing is they sort of make their content visual in Wakelet and create all their information. And then they simply just embed it into Canvas or Schoology. 
or whatever LMS you use. And then the, the wakelet collection, as you see here, just automatically embeds and it's really, it just sort of looks exactly like it looks here pretty much. So really simple and easy to do that as well. Um, newsletters, really, really good for newsletters. We've seen um, this quite quite a lot, uh, quite high usage in Wakelet is uh, teachers making newsletters for their, their parents or the school maybe making newsletters for all the teachers and all the parents. Um, so in this case, it's just a newsletter for the school. Uh, and it's just like sort of, yeah, pulling together some, some information, um, different timings of what's going on, uh, reception class, uh, years one and two, uh, all different things. I think this is more, this is an example of one during the pandemic actually. So this was shared to um, parents when when everybody were, was uh, remote, um, but it's sort of giving timings of different things um, going on in the school and sort of maybe announcements that, that have been made. Um, so really good example there. We've also seen lots of schools do this where they might have um, post stuff on social media, whether that's like sort of updates in the school, really great way to just curate all the tweets and different social posts into Wakelet that can then also be sort of shared to uh, parents, which is really nice. Um, so another nice example of how you can use Wakelet. Um, things, uh, maybe you could use it for, for this conference actually. Uh, really great for curating information across maybe different sessions that you attend during during the conference. Uh, often we know that when when you when you do attend a conference, it's great to bring things back to other teachers in your in your school um, and maybe uh, yeah sort of share share those that information with them. So we've seen this quite a lot as well, where people, whether that be virtually or in person, go into an event, they can curate different bits of information that's gone on from from the event. So as you can see here. Uh, some images from the um, the conference, some tweets, um, some different, maybe you found a really cool tool that you think would be good for the district, you can curate those and say maybe some information about those. But it's just a really good way to yeah uh, store information that you can share with other people in the future. Um, one thing that I've, I've not mentioned here actually is, and I'll, I'll go through two, two, bit, two other bits um, that, I've, that I've not really mentioned, but we also have a Wakelet extension and you can have, we have a Wakelet app on iOS and Android. So one thing we've seen quite a lot is uh, with conferences and different things like that, whereby you walk in around the conference and you see something, you want to take a picture or you want to scan a QR code or something like that, along those lines, you can save on the go. Um, again, sub plans if you're not in school and you don't have, or maybe you don't have access to your computer, go on your phone and you can customize that collection on the go. Uh, and it'll update in, in real time. So really nice um, way of using it on the go if you're not always on your computer. But I'll, I'll sort of talk you through um, the extension uh, after this final example. Um, but yeah, really good for student portfolios as well. So this is an example of a, a student who is using Wakelet as her portfolio page. Um, so Anora actually used Wakelet to sort of apply for college. Um, but as you can see here, she's just built her collections, made her profile look really nice. She's linked uh, her like Twitter, uh, Instagram, and her LinkedIn handles here. And she's just curated a portfolio for herself. Um, again, resume and contact, some of her achievements. Um, she's a musician, so she's got some videos and uh, things and uh, bits of her singing and stuff like that on here. So she's got lots of different places where she's sung and she's recorded all that down really nicely in Wakelet. Um, she's got some things that she's done in school. So she's into graphics. So she's uh, sort of showcasing some of the things that she's designed herself. Again, showcasing some of her skills. And um, yeah, she, she actually ran out her own jewelry business as well. So maybe it's not always a case of showcasing maybe work you've done in school. It might be a case of showing some stuff that you've done outside of school because often that's that's really interesting for college colleges to to sort of understand a bit about who you sell, who you are and maybe extracurricular things you do outside of school so she um yeah she's got some some jewelry that she made and and she she actually sold so she's documented all of that on wakelet as well Callum, there was a question in the yep. chat about uh you you mentioned phones on the go and the question yep. is only android or... No, so yeah, Android and uh, iOS. So on, on both app stores, if you go, just go and search Wakelet, you should be able to find uh, Wakelet come up uh, on both. So yeah, and we also have uh, the app works really well on the iPad as well. So in case you have an iPad, yeah, works on there as well. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, 
really nice portfolio page here. She built it out and she can share that on her LinkedIn profile. So I actually think she, I'm going to hit her LinkedIn profile actually. I think she actually stores her wakelet, um, her wakelet on her, I think. Yeah, she did. I don't know if she does, does anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, really nice example of of using it as a portfolio page. Um, just before I, I touch, I get to the end of this session and I, I ask if anybody has any questions, I'll just show the Wakelet extension as well. Just It's really a bit of a hack just to really quickly say things um, again on the go rather than having to sort of copy and paste the link into Wakelet and copy, paste, copy, paste. You can um, download the Wakelet extension here, which you can see in the top right corner. So you can download that really simply. So Chrome extension, just go to the Chrome store or whatever browser you're on, um, search Wakelet. And then you can install it onto your um, device. Just hit this button. Obviously I have it, already have it, but it will say just install. Um, and it, is, it just allows you to save stuff really, really quickly. So for instance, if I'm on Google and I'm on Abraham, it's about it right this time. Um, I'm on Wikipedia or whatever platform or whatever I want to, uh, sort of save I just hit this W here and then I can save it really quickly to one of my collections um, on the go or into a, my bookmarks area uh, save it and then that can go straight into Wakelet and um, yeah it updates in real time so that's another thing that we've seen quite heavily is um, users maybe if they've got something on their school website and they've embedded it onto the school website or in the LMS or wherever that might be save on the go with a browser extension and then automatically the collection that's embedded onto your website just updates um in in in, in real time um i think that's all i wanted to share today i know my colleague michael is going to be uh jumping on as well and running through a little bit more about uh, the collection in detail more about the profile page classrooms what, what i briefly touched upon earlier um but are, are, are there any questions um that i could answer for you How can I save one of these so that I can look at it later? So not my collection, like I want to save somebody else's. Okay, so you want to save somebody else's collection. Yeah, so uh, you just have to uh, copy the URL and paste it in. Um, we did used to have a function where you could save like the collection itself to a collection. Um, we removed that briefly, but it will be coming back at some point. But at the moment, just copy the URL and paste it into one of your other collections. We also have a, if you'll notice, there's a bookmarks area. So that's a place in which maybe you want to say, uh, you can save stuff if you don't have a collection that you want, you, like you, you might not know what the collection is you're creating. You just want to save it for later. So like the bookmarks is like a save for later area as well, in case you want to sort of save something in there, in there. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, well, I will stay uh, on on this for the for five minutes or so, and feel free to, to send any questions on on the background here. But my colleague Michael uh, will be joining in in a later session, be running through all the details of all the different things. Um, feel free to reach out to us as well if you have any questions. So we're a really responsive team. We get back to people um, really really quickly. So if you have any questions, uh, email us at community at wakeclub.com. Um, there we can sort of get back with any questions that you have. Um, and we also have a, an ambassador and community program. Um, so if you, in case you want to become an ambassador, um, we can, you can find lots of information about uh, that on community.wakelet.com. So yeah, we're really responsive team. Any questions, feel free to send them over. Um, and yeah, just um, hope, hopefully, hopefully you have a happy Wakelet experience. <laughs> okay, Thank you, Callum. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for inviting me along. And yeah. Feel free to reach and, out at any, any point in the future. And if uh, you need for the attendees, if you need the survey, um, I just put it in the chat for you with all the information, the room number. Our presenter is Callum Nightingale. His title was Become an Organized Educator with Wakelet. Awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.
This is room 13, correct? It is, yes. Just want to make sure I put the wrong one. 